Hi, this is the new Raspberry Pi Model 3 B Plus, and it's got the new uh, power over Ethernet capability. That's what this uh, little pin header is here. So you can get the new, ta-da, Raspberry Pi, official Raspberry Pi uh, power over Ethernet hat, which plugs into the top of that and plugs into that jumper down there. And that takes the uh, power over Ethernet that you can plug into the main board, which is quite smart. It actually taps uh, the primary side power pins off, takes them to those pins up there so that uh, you can put it through a uh, DC to DC uh, step down converter and generate the five volts in here, so 48 volts comes in here, um, a DC to DC uh, converter, five volts out, and then it goes out and powers your Raspberry Pi. Now, quite a few people have emailed me about this and said, hey, Dave, there's a problem with this new official Raspberry Pi power over Ethernet hat. It powers the Raspberry Pi just fine, but when you actually uh, uh, plug anything into the USB ports, it can't provide any power, and it shuts down the USB ports. So I thought we'd have a little investigation, see what's going on. Now, a few people have uh, complained about the surface mount power of the Ethernet connector here, and when they remove the board, because it's only got the four little pads there, and they are absolutely tiny, uh, they've had this connector rip off the board. Yeah, just be careful when you remove this thing. They probably There's no reason to use a uh, surface mount connector like that with the holes in back. There's no reason. They should have just used the uh, through hole. But even this one, um, when you plug it on, it's got the holes in the top, but you can't really then go plug another uh, hat on top of that because there's really hardly any pin space left. And it comes with these uh, standoffs. And anyway, um, yeah, just be careful when you're removing this thing. Now, the design of this looks okay. A uh, little transformer in the uh, cutout there to get a lower uh, profile. That's, you know, pretty standard fare. Um, they've got an isolation slot down here. But curiously, okay, they've got, you know, enough gap down there. But look at the gap up there, the clearance gap under this surface mount cap here. It's just naff all. So somebody forgot to peel that back there. But we've just got a uh, 1206 cap here between the grounds on uh, either side of the isolation uh, transformer there. That's for uh, noise reduction. But apart from that, you know, it looks pretty good. The transform looks good enough. Uh, we've got the controller here. We'll have to have a look at that. We've got an AT Tiny Micro here. So I'm not uh, entirely sure what the AT Tiny Micro is doing. Anyone? I don't know. I really haven't looked into the uh, details of this, but it's got a little uh, Sunon brand fan here. There must be a temperature sensor somewhere, and it just comes on. Maybe that's all the AT Tiny's doing, is doing the fan controller. I don't know. So likewise with the uh, clearance or lack thereof up here, they've done okay there, but up here, look, they got that really close as well. This is the secondary ground over here, and this is the primary side, so wah, they need to peel that back as well. You know, maybe they should have uh, put a little slot in there, perhaps. So, yeah, it's not the world's best uh, isolated uh, design, that's for sure. And, of course, the isolation would have to do with around here and how the traces are actually routed. They've pulled back the uh, flood fill around there, but all the internal traces you know who knows what the spacing is because it's got to get all the way from here all the way over to the primary side of the uh, transformer over here to there so how they're routing that out here somewhere with uh, clearance and all that sort of stuff i don't know and this is the uh, controller it's a monolithic power mp8007 and it's a primary side uh switcher it's just got a uh, quite a very nice actually um uh, ultra low drop uh, diode here and these are the output uh, capacitors they're at they look like they're in series but they're actually in parallel there and it's uh, the five volts directly out so there is actually no feedback on this thing to uh, do secondary side regulation it's actually done on the primary side it requires a uh, careful uh, design of the uh, transformer and diode and load selection and uh, stuff like that to ensure that the output is regulated. So for feedback, it actually uses a uh, secondary primary side coil here to actually uh, sense the voltage on the core. So, you know, you've got to have a careful uh, design of your transformer here. I'm powering it from a uh, 48 volt 0.35 amp uh, power over ethernet adapter here, and it works just fine. Trust me, I've had a look. We're getting 5.07 volts on the five volt rail there. 
we can just confirm that. I have confirmed that this uh, USB adapter is uh, hunky-dory. There we go. Now my particular board works just fine with the keyboard and mouse and this, which draws basically, you know, very little. Um, but we can plug in an electronic uh, load here and it's drawing, uh, you know, 15 milliamps of its own accord. Set this down here, 40 milliamps like that. I can switch our load on and it will draw that just fine. There it is, plus, uh, plus the, well, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. But if we go up on that, boom, it just, it switches off. So anything over about, roughly about, you know, 40 to 50 milliamps, something like that, sometimes you can just leave it there for a bit and it will actually uh, switch off. And if, of course, if I, you know, set it up to like 190 milliamps, for example, and then just press the button to switch it, it switches off the USB ports. And of course, they, uh, they recover just fine. You haven't damaged anything. So we want to actually uh, check for switching noise on this because this is a uh, switching step-down regulator. So I'm going to probe properly. I'm going to get rid of uh, the crap, you know, the antenna earth lead on there. I'm going to use the proper low inductive probe in down here and let's have a squiz. We've got our switching frequency on there. It's about 24.6 kilohertz or something like that. It's actually quite high. 320 millivolts peak to peak. So we don't have a huge load on there, just the uh, just the Raspberry Pi itself, although that is a fairly large load, but it's not doing anything. It's just like booted up and sitting there doing NAF4. But you can see, you'd expect to see some switching frequency there, of course. Um, I don't see any higher frequency uh, stuff in here. There's no ringing. It's, it's fairly clean if somewhat relatively high at 320 millivolts, but it's kind of what you expect, really. I mean, it doesn't have much uh, uh, output capacitance and filtering on this thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is apply the load, 200 milliamps here. I'm going to set my trigger point just below our ripple there. And here we go, we'll switch it on and see if our 5 volt rail dips. Nope, not a sausage. So it's got nothing to do with the rail dipping. Okay, let's just try that again with some AC coupling. 200 millivolts. We're getting a bit more accurate now. So there's our switching frequency like that. It's a fair bit of jitter on there. But uh, that's what you'd expect. And let's just uh, try and do that again, shall I? I'll just take it down a bit just in case it does something. And I'll apply the load again. See if there's any dynamic change in that. Yeah, there was. Look at that. It's doing something strange now is it like some pulse skipping mode or something oh yeah look there's some higher spikes up there that we didn't see last time that's interesting so if we single shot capture there we go look at that oh yeah look it's changed frequency from there to there some sort of mode change in the controller chip which causes that to change now of course if we unplug that and re-plug it, and I won't change anything. Oh no, there we go. No, it's the occasional, we had the occasional glitch there. No, there it is. No, it's still doing it. So, that's got nothing to do with it being shut down. It just changes frequency a bit there. If you're curious to know, there you go, 23.5 and 32.85. Anyway, the thing that really would be a problem was is any dips in there. And trust me, if I set that single shot on there, I cannot get it to do anything. I've tried it, uh, tried mucking around with it quite a bit, and I just cannot get it to dip or anything like that. So it's it's not a problem there. There's something else. Maybe the uh, USB controller doesn't like the amount of ripple. That's just me disconnecting. You know, or there's some other little, you know, spiky noise aspect to that switching converter. Okay, I'm running the latest uh, Raspbian stretch. What we're looking for here is to see if we can pick up any of these boot messages, these USB over current change um, on the various ports. So people are reporting this. There we go. And now we can have a look through here and I've actually had a look through and I cannot find any of these USB over current messages. Yes, I've got my mouse and my keyboard hooked up. Okay, we'll actually connect the power. 
then we'll plug in the USB afterwards. We're in like Flynn, our USB devices. And now let's go in and have a look. Right at the end, generic, nothing about overcurrents or anything like that. It's just detected the device. But what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to hook up power meter. We'll adjust that so it trips. A couple hundred milliamps. You can see it's uh, 5.07 volts there. And then I'm going to switch it on. And it should disconnect it. Anything over like a few tens of milliamps will disconnect it. Bingo. All right. And reconnect over current there it is we got it so just a microsoft moose and a uh, microsoft keyboard they're obviously not enough to uh, make it over range in my particular case but uh, your mileage may vary we got multiple ones there and why it like it shut down like it's saying port 2 port 3 it's saying multiple ports and then 248 that's when we plugged our keyboard and mouse back in and Bob's your uncle. So there you go. We are getting something as causing and logging the overcurrent uh, message there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually uh, measure the supply on its own and see what happens. Feeding in uh, 48 volts here from my bench power supply and we've got an electronic load on the output here. So I've got it set to uh, 1 watt load at the moment. And sure enough, we're getting uh, 5.08 uh, volts there and we're feeding in uh, just split 24 volt uh, rails there so we're drawing a load of one watt here but uh, look at the rail here we're talking uh, 1.4 watts total so we're you know pissing away about uh, 0.4 watts in this uh, converter but when you're powering it from power over ethernet meh doesn't matter now here's the issue I talked about before with the antenna earth lead in this case an inductive loop a big ground lead like this going suspiciously near the transformer. It just happened to be the way I wired it. And wah, look at the output there. Looks horrible. Look at all that uh, switching component on there. And you'll notice that that's actually uh, high frequency switching. We can trigger on that. There we go. We can zoom right in on that. And there's all the switching crap. That's just absolute garbage. But you'll notice that that is just pick up from the lead. That's just bad probing technique. So if I actually move that further away from there, it should get lower and lower in amplitude. There you go. It's just bad probing. So I'll just move the probe over to this side and we don't have to worry about probing that. Now it's all hunky-dory. Look at that. So we're just getting what we saw before. No wackers. 9 kilohertz. Let's just have a look. See if that changes with our uh, load. So let's go up to a 2 watt load, for example. 2 watts. There we go. Yeah, doubled. There you go. 19 kilohertz now. So the frequency uh, varies with, and I'm sure if you read the data sheet, this is exactly what it's supposed to do. But the frequency varies with the load. But this baby is supposed to be able to do 5 volts at uh, 2.5 amps. So that's 12.5 uh, watts. So, well, let's go all the way with LBJ. Yep, it's still outputting 5 volts. No worries. But our frequency, whoa, it's gone way up to 122 kilohertz there. But our ripple uh, voltage has still pretty much stayed the same. So that's not too shabby. And look at those extra switching components. Hmm. Now I've actually got a high res mode turned on there, so that can be a trap for young players. So we'll take that off, and there we go. That's our uh, that's our switching component down in there. We're at uh, 100 millivolts per division, so you know 10, 20, 30, almost 40. Oh, uh, sorry, 400 millivolts uh, peak to peak there. That's on our 5 volt rail at the full output power. <laughs> it's not terrific, is it? And if you want to know what happens, uh, does it regulate properly at lower uh, loads as well? Well, check it out. We're at uh, 0.1 watts there. And, well, you know, 5.1. It's creeping up. If we go down, look at that, 5.8. Yeah, it, it needs a minimum of, like, 0.1 watt. But, of course, that's no problem whatsoever because it's always getting that load uh, due to the Raspberry Pi. So, yeah, nothing to worry about there. No whackers. 
and it's supposed to operate down to uh, 37 volts so I've changed it down to 37 volts and our 12 and a half watts output and it's working just fine so there's essentially nothing wrong with this uh, Raspberry Pi power over the Ethernet hat pretty much it, you know it's doing the business except perhaps in the ripple department it may just have too much ripple which is passing possible i've done a video on this how ripple can easily pass through uh voltage regulators the linear the 3.3 volt linear voltage regulator so any ripple on the 5 volt rail is going to translate through mostly um, it's going to, you know, especially at these sort of frequencies, it's pretty much mostly going to pass through to the 3.3 volt rail. And if you've got, as, as we're seeing there, like hundreds of millivolts ripple, like, <laughs> yeah, that can cause all sorts of issues to digital USB chips and stuff like that. So it, it, the issue has to be there. The chip is glitching, doing something. I suspect it's that uh, USB chip that's uh, glitching due to just noise and crap on the rails, perhaps. Because, like, it's certainly not dropping out, which was my first uh, thing that I suspected. And it's definitely not doing that. The, the supply is doing the business. Okay, so what I'm doing now is uh, 37 volts again input, so sort of like, uh, you know, worst case voltage at the rated uh, 12 and a half watts output power, 5 volts at 2 and a half amps. And let's just get the thermal camera on here, and it's pretty horrendous. Um, it, yes, it's calibrated, there you go, uh, you know, near enough. Um, I'm using emissivity, emissivity of 0.95. We've got the diode here. That's the, uh, that's the output diode on the secondary side. We're talking over 100 degrees on that diode. 110, the alignment's a bit off in terms of like the image camera in this thing to the heat map. But yeah, that diode, and then the other diode on the input over here, like 130 degrees. This is ridiculous. The, the chip, we're to, ah, sorry, the chip is uh, like, we're, we're talking like 120. This is nuts. This thing is getting ridiculously hot. It's right next to that electrolytic cap too. Uh, bugger. I think I killed it. Unfortunately, I've killed it. Um, it, 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 I, w <laughs> I was going to show you that, you know, if you don't trust the thermal camera, I was getting in there with my uh, thermocouple. I was going right on the output side of the diode down in here so I was going right on the output side and unfortunately I shorted the output of the diode to that filter cap so um wah, 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 wah. Oh! um so there you go I'm going to um sorry but I'm going to call it quits now because I'm not going to go and troubleshoot repair this stupid power supply so if you like the video uh give it a thumbs up and uh by all means have a good laugh down in the comments at my uh uh <laughs> the stupidity in my alignment of the um temperature probe because it's metal and it shorts out and i got in there and it just slipped off and boom it got between one of the uh caps and the diode and something just went Ch and um it doesn't work anymore. Magic smoke escaped. Um, damn. So I'm not going to be able to readily troubleshoot uh, this thing right now, the USB chip. Um, yeah, we'll have to leave that for a part two perhaps. But that's where this is looking. So I hope you like that investigation. Catch you next time. Yeah.